De regreso aquí en Auto 060 en Cristina Radio Network y ahora vamos a hablar de un tema muy importante que es la seguridad de los autos. El Instituto de Aseguradoras y Seguridad en las Carreteras, el IIHS, por las siglas eh, como se dicen en inglés, condujo las pruebas para los vehículos compactos y solamente uno de 11 vehículos que probaron alcanzó el rating aceptable. Así que aquí vamos con la entrevista con Ross Raider del IIHS. So now we're here with Ross Raider with the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. How are you, Ross? Uh, Happy New Year, I guess. Still new in January. <laughs> Happy New Year to you. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much. Uh, again, a, a very interesting new study about uh, small vehicles, mini cars in this case, uh, with this new uh, frontal uh, test that you've been doing for what is now, a couple of years now? Yeah, the Institute implemented the small overlap test in 2012. This is a more stringent frontal test that's more challenging for the vehicle's uh, structure. And it was uh, implemented after our research showed that about 25% of the serious injuries that still occur in frontal crashes are in these small overlap collisions. Yeah, and uh, for people who, I mean, we've mentioned it before here in the show, but uh, for, for people who have not uh, heard it or not uh, aware of exactly what it is, this is something that replicates, for example, when a car hits like a, 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 a utility pole, a tree or something, but only from one side of the front of the vehicle, right? Yeah, if you picture the front end of a car and you uh, think about the different crash tests that are done, for example, the U.S. federal government conducts a frontal test in which the whole front end, the full width of the front end, hits the test barrier. Yeah. The Institute, since 1995, has done a frontal test in which only 40% of the front end hits a barrier. So it's a smaller portion of the front end. Um, Kind of, it's a 40% overlap with the barrier. And this new small overlap test is an even smaller overlap, so it's just 25% of the front end. So it's replicating what happens if the front corner of a vehicle clips another car coming the opposite direction on the highway, or if a tr car goes off the road and hits a tree or a pole. Yeah, and, uh, and heating less surface of the front of the car makes the physics of the impact uh, more dramatic, right? That's what I understand, and what, that's why this test is much more important and the results are so important for consumers. Yeah, it's a challenging test because when you hit only that front uh, corner in the, 40%, in the 25% overlap, what is happening often is if the, if the vehicle is not designed to handle that kind of crash, then the impact misses the main crash absorbing structures that are in the usually in the front center of the front end and when you miss those energy absorbing structures then you're going into the suspension the wheel uh, through the fender into the occupant compartment and if the occupant compartment isn't designed well then the occupant compartment can collapse and you get steering wheels moving back toward the driver, you get uh, structures puncture, um, uh, moving backward toward the driver, and when the occupant compartment collapses, then the seatbelts and airbags can't do their job properly. So that's why it's important in this test, we're uh, hoping to drive engineering changes to push those energy absorbing structures out further into the corners. Yeah, and also just for people who don't know, these tests are done at 40 miles per, per hour, so which is uh, for some people might not sound like a, a very high speed, but uh, it creates a lot of damage when when uh, when a car hits at that speed, right? Right, it's a it's a severe impact, and when vehicles aren't designed well, like some of these mini cars, uh, uh, we see a lot of severe damage, uh, occupant compartments collapsing. Um, The crash test dummy uh, actually missing the airbag because the the frontal airbag because the steering wheel moves out of the way, and when that happens, it puts the driver at greater risk of the driver's head hitting hard objects like the instrument panel or the pillar between the uh, instrument panel and the door moving backward toward the driver. And uh, out of these 11 mini cars, 
only one managed to earn an acceptable rating. The rest of them are marginal or poor. Yeah, so let's go uh, a little bit through the list. So the, the only one that made it was the Chevy Spark uh, for 2014. So he got an overall rating of A and then like pretty much good ratings on the rest of the tests, right? The rest of the tests, we have uh, four vehicles earning a marginal rating and the rest are poor. So the worst performers are the Fiat 500 and the Honda Fit. So manufacturers of these uh, small vehicles have a long way to go to improve protection in these kinds of crashes. Yeah, and uh, even though uh, they, they've done their, I guess the manufacturers in most cases do their own tests, and, and some of them claim that they, these, uh, these cars are safe, and, and they might be in other tests, right? But this is the importance of this uh, particular test that the Institute does. Well, some manufacturers have been making engineering changes to do better in, for small overlap protection. Some manufacturers have been building this uh, test into their process for designing new vehicles. Um, but in this group, only the Chevrolet Spark earned the second highest rating of acceptable the rest are marginal or poor, and uh, what we know from the other vehicle groups that we've tested is that some vehicle groups as a whole are doing better, including small cars. We have a number of small cars which are one size bigger than these mini cars in, in our size classes. We have some small cars that are doing much better. So if you're looking for a vehicle that performs well in all of the crash tests, you may want to move up one size class and look at vehicles the size of the Honda Civic, for example, which does very well in this test. Yeah, and uh, uh, on the list I see, as you mentioned, the Chevy Spark, uh, which made uh, the, the list uh, on, on top of uh, the safe car, and then the Mazda 2, the Kia Rio, the Toyota Yaris, the Ford Fiesta built after August uh, 2013, those were marginal, and then on the poor, Mitsubishi Mirage, Nissan Versa, Toyota Prius, Hyundai Accent, Fiat 500, and Honda Fit. I don't see the, the smart car. Is that in the subcategory of this, or why is it not included in this test particularly? Right. Well, the, the smart car is, uh, is even smaller than these mini cars and fits into a category that we call micro cars. Okay. And we haven't conducted a test of the smart car yet. Oh, I see. So, uh, as you were mentioning, when, when, when people are looking into cars, and obviously these cars are very popular because of their price and uh, because of some of the features that they have, are very good for teenagers. I mean, like people are looking into an option of this, but uh, uh, as you said, the Institute has noticed that a, a, a little bigger car will be a safer choice, right? It would be a safer choice. You know, people uh, obviously buy vehicles for different reasons. Uh, if you live in an urban area and you're looking for a vehicle that's maneuverable and gets good fuel economy, uh, you might be looking at this uh, size category, or if you're trying to economize, but keep in mind that um, you're giving up a level of uh, crash protection when you move into this size class. Not only the vehicles that perform uh, uh, poorly in this small overlap test, that's one issue, but also the issue of just simply physics, which is when you're in a small lightweight vehicle, you have inherently less protection than in a bigger, heavier car. So a, a vehicle that earns an acceptable rating like the Chevrolet Spark, that doesn't mean it's just as safe as a bigger vehicle that earns the same rating because the laws of physics are always in play. And um, especially if you're looking for a vehicle for a teen, a beginning driver, uh, it's important to choose a vehicle that's going to offer the best level of protection because teens are more likely to crash. And so for teenagers, it would be better to get a, a bigger vehicle, you know, starting with like a mid-sized car, maybe choosing um, one that's a few years old if you're on a budget. Um, but it would be better to choose a mid-sized car that's a few years old rather than one of these mini cars that's brand new. Yeah, that's, a, that's I guess, another issue because actually my neighbor who just bought an, a used C-Class, like it's like five, seven, eight years old maybe, the car looks fabulous, but the, the team doesn't like it, so oh. <laughs> that's, that's a whole separate issue. 
sometimes the car the team doesn't want to drive is exactly the safest car for them to drive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, and, and again, as you were mentioning, in terms of physics and, and things that are out there on the road, I mean, there, obviously there are more bigger cars and trucks and SUVs and pickup trucks on the road. So when you're driving in this car, these little cars, uh, one, uh, some people in huge cars might not even see you. And the other one, when there's a collision, unfortunately, you're going to have the worst part of it, right? That's right. Uh, if you crash in a vehicle of this size, almost anything that you, any other vehicle you crash into is going to be bigger and heavier than you are. And so you have to keep that in mind that uh, if safety and fuel economy are both priorities, uh, you might want to look at a vehicle that's a little bit larger because uh, moving into a vehicle that's uh, even slightly larger gives you an advantage. Yeah. So, Ross uh, Rader for the Institute of Safety, uh, Highway and Safety. Um, what other tests are you conducting? I guess you, you, you never stop doing it, right? There's so many new cars coming out. We're working our way through all of the vehicle categories for this uh, small overlap test, and we'll be doing uh, SUVs and releasing those uh, probably sometime in the late spring. Yeah. And uh, we'll be continuing to do tests and evaluations of the new crash avoidance technology to help consumers choose the features that do the best to help them stay out of crashes. Yeah. In Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, Ross Rader, thank you very much for your time and, uh, and for your information. I mean, it's very valuable for consumers who are looking into buying new cars and uh, obviously safety, it's a, it's a number one priority when you're driving, right? Yep, that's exactly right. And you can check, uh, see all of the results uh, on our website at iihs.org. Thank you very much, Russ, and I'll talk to you soon with uh, the new round of tests. Thank you very much. Bye. Have a good day.